Good morning, third graders. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Um, it is a happy Monday. I hope that you all have had a wonderful week and that you enjoyed last week's lessons. Um, this week we are going to continue with a reading lesson. Instead of working with asking and answering questions, we are going to be working with sequence of events, as you can see. So before we get started, just a few reminders. Remember our online lesson norms. First one, is to make sure that you're focused. So you wanna make sure that you watch and you listen um, so that you can learn as much as possible. Remember if there's people around you or if you're distracted by someone or something that's going on, maybe move to a room um, where you can be by yourself so that you can stay focused. Uh, number two says rewind the video. So if you're confused or you need something repeated, just Rewind it and listen to it again, or if you just want to hear Ms. Bornhor's beautiful voice again, feel free to watch it as many times as you want. Um, step three is record your learning on your paper. So in just a minute, as we have done in the last few lessons, we will get our note catcher set up so that you have a space to record your learning. And number four says to reflect on your learning in the comment section of the video. So remember, at the end of this lesson, I'm going to give you a question. I'm going to ask you a question for your exit ticket. You will be responsible for posting your response in the comment section underneath this video. And I will give you more directions on that later. Just to review, um, for this lesson, you'll see these symbols throughout our presentation or throughout our learning today. Again, if you see this symbol here, it means to pause the video. So you'll need to pause it, think about something, and most likely write something, which is when you'll see this pencil here, which means to write. And that's when you'll record that on your note catcher. And you see this funny little guy down here, we'll call him Mr. Brain. It means that you need to stop and you need to think. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask that you think about the question that I ask you, and you can either say it out loud to, to your friend, to your dog, to your wall, to your imaginary friend. It doesn't really matter. Just say it out loud just so you can get your thinking out. And then finally, this comment button down here, you'll see that at the end of our lesson today when I ask you to post your a comment in the comment section for your exit ticket. All right, so for today's lesson, you will need three things. You will need your pencil, or pen, I suppose, your paper, and um, the text. So again, if you have the district packet, um, this text is located in that packet. If not, I emailed out um, the document that has this text. And if you still don't have access to that, not a problem. I will have it on the slides today. And so if you, when you're reading, if you need it, if you need to, just pause the um, lesson and you can read it on the slide. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead and get our note catcher set up. So if you look at this piece of paper over here, you'll notice again we have our first and last name up here. That's for when you take a picture of your work. So Ms. Pornhorse and the other third grade teachers know whose work it is. Um, and then you have a spot for your do now, the sequence of events, that's the topic of our lesson today. And then you have this chart in the middle of the paper. You'll need to draw this and go ahead and fill in this first um, box. We'll go over what all of this means later in the lesson. Um, and then you'll need a space for your exit ticket. And as always, if there's not enough space on the front, feel free to go on to the back and use the space on the back. So at this moment, I'd like you to pause this video, complete your note catcher as you see it on the screen. And then when you're ready, hit play and I'll be here waiting for you. All right, now that you have your note catcher set up, we're gonna get our brains warmed up with our do now. So if you'll take a look at this slide, our do now, um, and you'll see Mr. Brain here, which means you're gonna have to think. Your do now says, what do all of the words below have in common? So we say first, next, finally, at last. Pause this video, record your response on your notebook paper. What do all of the words below have in common? First, next, finally, at last. All right, now that you've had time to think about and record your response, what did you come up with? I'm hoping that you notice that all of these kind of tell us when something is happening. And we're gonna talk about what those words mean, words that tell us when something's happening here in just a little bit. Let's take a look at our learning target and see if we can figure out what those words are called. So if you'll follow along with me, 
Repeat after me. I can. Use time and sequence words to help me understand how events in history are connected. So you should have noticed that we're going to be taking a look at time and sequence words, right? So all of those words that you just saw on the previous slide, we said that those are words that say when something is happening. Well, as you can see from our target here, those are called time and sequence words, right? Well, authors use these words for a certain reason. Take a look at our target. What? Why do authors use them as a reason or in their writing? It says to help them understand how events in history are connected. So they're going to tell us when things are happening and how they're connected, how things in history are connected. So let's get dive in today, shall we? So just a quick review. I want you to think, what is history? What is history? I'll give you a hint down here. It says, I opened my history textbook to learn about World War I. So what do you think history is? Thinking? Okay. Well, when I take a look at my hint down here, it says I opened my history textbook, okay, usually to learn about things when we read textbook. It says to learn about World War I. Well, I know that World War I happened in the past. So I'm guessing that maybe history is events in the past? Well, let's take a look at our learning today. Let's follow along with me. It says, do you like a good story? Then you probably enjoy history. History is the story of events that happened in the past. Ooh, ding, ding, ding. Story of events that happened in the past. Okay, it says historical events are usually told in a sequence which is the order in which they happened. The sequence can help you understand the relationships or connections between those events. When you read, look for signal words that give clues about time, order, and sequence. First, next, and finally are signal words. So are phrases such as, as, or later that year, and in 1864. Okay, so again, today we're gonna to be talking about um, events that happen in history, Focusing on those sequence words that tell us when things happened, such as first, next, finally, later that year, and in 1864. All of those words tell us when something happened, right? I want you to think, Can what other sequence words can you think of? Can you come up with at least two more? Shout them out. Well, here's a list of sequence words that Miss Bornhorst has come up with. And you guys should be familiar with these because you have, should have seen these earlier this year um, as we were learning about frogs and in Peter Pan, right? So here's some more sequence um, or temporal words that we can use. First, second, next, finally, then, lastly, in the end. After that. Now, this is not a full list of sequence words. You guys have actually come up with a lot of these with me, um, but it's a good start. And so, today, when you're working later on your exit ticket, if you need these sequence words, come on back, uh, rewind it to this point in the video, pause here, and you can use these as you're writing. Okay? Now, if you'll look at your, up here at the top, it says sequence or temporal words, those are the same thing. Help us understand when events in history occurred. So we use these to help us know when something happened, right? Well, we're going to start and we're going to take a look at um, a few pictures to help us get us warmed up with using these sequence words. So I want you to take a look at our little comic strip here. It says, what sequence words do you see? Okay, so I'm going to read this. If you see a snake sequence word, I want you to snap, right? It says, first the Vikings sailed to North America. Next, they started a settlement. After a few difficult years, the Vikings gave up and returned home. Well, there were three sequence words. Okay, you should have identified the following sequence words. First, next, after a few difficult years, right? 
First, next, and after a few difficult years all tell me when something happened. I know what happened first, I know what happened second, and I know what happened third, right? You'll notice my little note here says sometimes you might use a phrase to signal when an event happened. So notice it doesn't just have to be one word. It can be an entire phrase that tells you when. After a few difficult years. So I know that it was after a few difficult years, right? Not just later, but more specifically, of after a few difficult years. So again, all these words tell us when something happened. Okay, so now I want us to see, well, yes, authors use these sequence words, but in our target, it told us they use them to help us know how events are connected, right? How they go together. So if you think about a connection, you can think about um, like cubes or Legos, how they connect together. Right, they stick together. So we have to figure out why would the author use these sequence words to connect ideas? Well, I want you to take a look at specifically the second and the third events. We want to figure out how are the second and third events connected. So first we have the Vikings that sailed to North America. Okay, well second, after that, once they got to North America, it says they started a settlement. Right? And then finally, it says, after a few difficult years, the Vikings gave up and returned home. Well, I'm thinking here, when they got here, if they hadn't have started this settlement, they would have never had the opportunity to give up and go home, right? And so these are connected because we know that they left because their settlement was not successful. It was too difficult. Right. So perhaps maybe if they wouldn't have had to do this or maybe if there was already everything that they needed there, they would have stayed. But because they started it and had had some difficult times, then they left. So these are connected. It, it, they lead one event leads to the next event. OK, so authors use these sequence words to tell us and help us understand when things are happening and, and almost why one thing leads to another. OK. So I want you to take a look now at our comic strip. You'll notice that the events have moved. It says, would it make sense to arrange the events like this? Why or why not? So it says, next, they started a settlement. After a few difficult years, the Vikings gave up and returned home. First, the Vikings sailed to North America. Now, you're probably thinking, Miss Bornhorst, you're nuts. This makes no sense at all. And you would be right. Miss Bornhorst is crazy, and this doesn't make any sense, right? This doesn't make sense because you'll see this sequence word here says first. Well, I know that first has to come first, so it doesn't make sense that it's at the end here, right? Plus, if the Vikings never have sailed to North America, they wouldn't have been able to do all of this stuff, right? So this is why those sequence words are important. They tell us when something happens and how it's connected to the other events, right? This has to happen first in order for these two things to occur, right? So I want you to think, how do sequence words help us while we are reading? I'm hoping that by now you thought of something um, that says that sequence words help us while we're reading because they allow us to know when something happened and allows us to see how events are connected. Okay, when something happens and how they're connected. So before we move on to our text today, I'd like you to take your brain break now. So pause this video to 10 jumping jacks, 10 squats, and 10 lunges. If you want to mix these up and do the lunges first, then the squats, then, ju then the jumping jacks, you go for it. When you are done, once you've got that energy out, I want you to continue, um, press play, and we will continue on with the end of our lesson today. Welcome back. Hoping you're feeling uh, rejuvenated. Now we're going to get started. We're going to keep working with these sequence words, um, but we're going to focus on using um, those sequence words within a text. So before we get started, I want you to take a look here at this slide. It says, based on the title and the illustration, what do you think this text will be about? So here is the title and the illustration. It says, Adventures of the Growing Nation by Terry Hillen. And then we have this picture over here of the United States, okay? And then um, our key says that there's a route of Lewis and Clark. So you can see this little pathway here. 
That is the pathway of Lewis and Clark. So based on the title and the illustration, I want to, you to think to yourself, what do you think that this will be about? All right, well, we are now going to see if your predictions were correct. So before we get started, you know that we're going to read this three times, okay? Our first read, we always just read it for fun. Okay, so again, here is our title, Adventures of the Growing Nation. Before we get started, it's probably a good idea to review some vocabulary. So we need to know what this word nation is. Now, the reason I didn't tell you it before I, you made your prediction is because is I just wanted to see what you could come up with, right? Now, when we before we start reading, we need to understand what a nation is because we're going to read about the growing adventures or the adventures of a growing nation. So what is a nation? Well, a nation is people living in the same country or under the same government, right? People living in the same country or under the same government. So everyone living in our United States um, would be living in the same nation, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to just read the text for fun. Again, when you're working, if you need to, just pause the slide and follow along with me. Or if you want to read it on your own, you can just pause the slide, right? So here we go. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Imagine that in one day, our country doubled in size. That's what happened to the United States in 1803. President Thomas Jefferson asked France to sell the United States a vast area of land. Overnight, America added more than 828,000 square miles of land west of the Mississippi River. This is known as the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson wanted to know the fastest way across the new land. At the time, there were no maps of the whole country. Jefferson asked Meriwether Lewis to explore the area. Lewis was an army captain whom just Jefferson trusted. Lewis chose another soldier, William Clark, to help him lead the party. To get ready, they first had a large boat built. The boat took the men down the Ohio River. Then they built a base camp near St. Louis, Missouri. They spent the winter of 1803 there. Finally, on May 14, 1804, Lewis and Clark began their famous trip into the new territory. Fifty men went with them. They traveled for over 18 months. Finally, the group, of it, the group made it to the Pacific Ocean. On November 7, 1805, Clark wrote, Ocean in view! Oh, the joy! The group spent a long, cold winter near the ocean. Then they began the trip back home in March 1806. Lewis and Clark arrived in St. Louis in September 1806. They were greeted with a big party. A century later, in 18, or 1904, the World's Fair was held in St. Louis. People honored Lewis and Clark's journey at the fair. All right, so I'm guessing, first of all, I hope that you enjoyed um, the text. I'm guessing that you probably saw some sequence words as we were reading. I hope that you that you saw some sequence words. Now I want you to remember that sequence words don't always have to be one word and that sometimes they can be dates, right? Now remember sequence words just tell us when something happened, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to take a look now at your chart, okay? Now we're going to focus on these events right here, things that happened in winter of 1803, in May of 1804, November of 1805, and September of 1806. We are going to read the text again. And as we read, I want you to pay attention to these events right here. See if you can figure out what happened in winter of 1803, what happened in May of 1804, November of 1805, September of 1806. These events would be in order, as you can see, by the years. So it goes 1803, 1804, 1805, 1806, right? I've already completed the first one for you. It says, first, President Jefferson asked Meriwether Lewis to explore the new land. We need to figure out what happened second, third, fourth, and fifth. We're going to put the events in order. Now, if you have the text in front of you, you can underline what happened in each of those. If you do not, you can just snap 
when you hear it and that'll and make a mental note of where you need to go back into the text when we when you complete the chart now these are not the only sequence words that are in this text i saw some words like finally or next or then if you see any of those i want you to circle them on your paper if you do not have the text i want you to record them on your note catcher so for example if i go back to the text over here i see this word finally so i know that i can go ahead and write down finally because i know that that's a sequence word right so again if we are going to go back we're going to read it the second time i want you to pay attention to what happened during these times okay feel free to look back at your note catcher as you need to all right looking for events and putting them in order it says imagine that in one day our country doubled in size that's what happened to the united states in 1803. president thomas jefferson asked france to sell the united states a vast area of land Overnight, America added more than 828,000 square miles of land west of the Mississippi River. This is known as the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson wanted to know the fastest way across the new land. At the time, there were no maps of the whole country. Jefferson asked Meriwether Lewis to explore the area. Lewis was an army captain whom Jefferson trusted. Lewis chose another soldier, William Clark, to help him lead the party. To get ready, they first had a large boat built. The boat took the men down the Ohio River. Then they built a base camp near St. Louis, Missouri. They spent the winter of 1803 there. Finally, on May 14, 1804, Lewis and Clark began their famous trip into the new territory. Fifty men went with them. They traveled for over 18 months. Finally, the group, group made it to the Pacific Ocean. On November 7, 1805, Clark wrote, Ocean in view! Oh, the joy! The group spent a long, cold winter near the ocean. Then they began the trip back home in March 1806. Lewis and Clark arrived in St. Louis in September 1806. They were greeted with a big party. A century later, in 1904, the World's Fair was held in St. Louis. People honored Lewis and Clark's journey at the fair. All right. So now that we've read a second time, I'm hoping that you under or that you circled the sequence words or recorded the sequence words that you saw and that you found what happened in these events. Now, I'm hoping that as you went through um, this text, some of the sequence words that you found, you as I mentioned, you saw finally, right? And you saw many dates like on November 7th. Um, also on May 14th, 1804, right? All of those signal when something happened, okay? So I'm hoping that you found those. There were several more as well that you could have, that you could have found. Now, as we are reading the third time, your focus is to record what happened in each of these events, okay? Now, I want you to remember that as you're completing this chart, you need to be going back into the text and looking for specifically these dates and when and what happened at those times, right? So I'm going to help you. I'm going to do winter of 1803 with you. Then you will be responsible for doing May, November, and September. Okay, so really pay attention to what happened in winter of 1803, May of 1804, November 1805, and September 1806. Okay, last time, here we go says, imagine that in one day our country doubled in size. That's what happened to the United States in 1803. President Thomas Jefferson asked France to sell the United States a vast area of land. Overnight, America added more than 828,000 square miles of land west of the Mississippi River. This is known as the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson wanted to know the fastest way across the new land. At the time, there were no maps of the whole country. Jefferson asked Meriwether Lewis to explore the area. Lewis was an army captain whom Jefferson trusted. Lewis chose another soldier, William Clark, to help him lead the party. To get ready, they first had a large boat built. The boat took them in down the Ohio River. Then they built a base camp near St. Louis, Missouri. They spent the winter of 1803 there. Finally, on May 14, 1804, Lewis and Clark began their famous trip into the new territory. Fifty men went with them. 
They traveled for over 18 months. Finally, the group made it to the Pacific Ocean. On November 7, 1805, Clark wrote, Ocean in view! Oh, the joy! The group spent a long, cold winter near the ocean. Then they began the trip back home in March 1806. Lewis and Clark arrived in St. Louis in September 1806. They were greeted with a big party. A century later, in 1904, the World's Fair was held in St. Louis. People honored Lewis and Clark's journey at the fair. So, when we look at winter of 1803, I'm going to go back into the text, and I know that when I when I was reading about this, I saw in paragraph 3, it says they spent the winter of 1803 there. Okay, well, this sentence doesn't necessarily tell me very much. Like, I know they spent the winter somewhere, but where did they spend it? So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to read from the beginning of paragraph 3 and see if I can figure out exactly where they were in 1803. So it says, to get ready, they first had a large boat built. The boat took the men down the Ohio River. Then they built a base camp near St. Louis, Missouri. They spent the winter of 1803 there. Okay, so now I know from the sentence before that they spent the winter in St. Louis, Missouri. So next to, oops, next to winter of 1803, I can say Lewis and Clark spent the winter in St. Louis. Right? Because as I looked in paragraph 3, it says 1803, what they do? They were in St. Louis, Missouri, and they stayed there during the winter. So you can go ahead and pause this video and record our second event in that space. Okay, now what you are going to need to do is you are going to need to continue to complete this chart right so we already have the first two events what i would like for you to do is pause the video and go back to um, the text if you need it figure out what happened in may of 1804 november of 1805 and september of 1806 all of these events happened in order you need to figure out what those last three events are pause the video and complete that now All right, now that you have completed the chart, it is time for you to take a picture of it and send it to your homeroom teacher. So you can choose to email or text the picture to your teacher, but we want to see your work. So please pause the video, take a picture now, and send to your teacher. Now that you have sent your your work to your teacher. I want us just to re do a quick check here and see um, and see what sequence words uh, we could use in front of our um, learning today. So it says, what sequence words could you add before each event to help connect the events even more? So you'll notice, yes, these are sequence words. They tell us when it happened. We know that this event happened in the winter of 1803. We know that this event happened in May of 1804, November 1805, September of 1806. But I want to know, could we add words like finally, next, or then in front of these to kind of even help the reader out a little bit more, right? So for example, I would not put first in front of September of 1806 because that's my last event. Maybe I could say lastly in front of this event because it's the last one. I want you to think right now, what events could you, or what sequence words could you put in front of these words to help your reader understand more about when something happened in this text? All right, well, I would like to show you or see if maybe your work looks similar to the sequence words that I came up with, right? So I didn't add one here, for first, because that is a sequence word, that is a transition word. But you'll notice that I then added for the second event, I said first, President Jefferson asked Mer Meriwether Lewis to explore the new land. Then, sequence word, in the winter of 1803, Lewis and Clark spent the winter in St. Louis. Later, in May 1804, Lewis and Clark began their journey. 
Over a year later, in November 1805, Lewis and Clark reached the Pacific Ocean. Finally, in September 1806, Lewis and Clark arrived back in St. Louis. So you'll notice by adding these sequence words, I have a better understanding of when something happened. I know this was first, then this, later this, over a year later, more specific, and then finally. Right, so now I have a clear understanding of when these events occurred. Again, how did sequence word help us while reading this text? What would happen if we didn't use sequence words? So how did they help us and what would happen if we didn't use them? I'm hoping that you understand that they help us by helping us know when something is happening and why events occur in that order, right? Why certain things happen. And I'm hoping that you understand that if we didn't use them, we could be very confused. We wouldn't understand when specific events are actually occurring in history. We could mix up the um, events in history. So those sequence words are very important. Plus, they help to uh, make the writing a little bit smoother and make it easier and more enjoyable for the reader to read. At this time, now that we are finished with our lesson, it's time to, to practice. So for your exit ticket today, it says, think about what you do every morning. Write three sentences using three different sequence words to describe what you do every morning. So again, write three sentences at least using three different sequence words to describe what you do every morning. Right? So you could use words like first, next, finally, lastly, then. Okay? You come up with them. I want you to write this on your paper. And then on the next slide here, I'll show you how you're going to um, submit your work. So pause this video and respond to your exit ticket now. All right, now that you have written your exit ticket on your paper, it is now time to type your response in the comment section. So below this video, you need to include your name. You need to include complete sentences in your response. In this case, you don't have necessarily have evidence to, report, to, to re support your response, but you do need those transition words. So I'll be looking for at least three sentences and at least three transition words when you post your comment. So at the conclusion of this video, please post, I cannot wait to read your morning routines with those sequence words. Um, as for now, that's all I've got for you. Thanks for learning with me today, um, and I will see you next time and look forward to um, all of the responses in your learning this week. I hope that you'll have a great week, and I'll be back with you next week. Bye-bye.